In the last video, we covered the debug command, which gives us the ability to stop our test script so we can look around the page. Sometimes though, you just need to wait a moment for an action to occur on the page before continuing on. This is where the pause command comes in. Pause is a simple command that will delay your test a defined amount of time before continuing on. For example, if you want to test a carousel menu that auto-rotates after a specific interval, you'll need to wait until it rotates before validating the functionality. We'll cover testing the carousel later in this module, as it requires some additional knowledge we haven't gone over yet. For now, let's check out the animation on the accordion menu we have in our facts section at the bottom of our homepage. As you can see, when you click on one of the sections, it expands the content of that section out via an animation. Let's write a test using pause to validate this functionality works. Starting off, we'll create a new file to house our tests. We'll name it facts.js. Then we create our describe block, naming our test homepage facts accordion. This first test will just validate that the first section is visible. We'll title it should show first section on page load. There are a few ways we can validate this, but we'll be using the get CSS property command. This command returns an object describing the value of the CSS property you are asking for. Simply pass in the element you want to check and the property you want to look at. Here we want to check the first accordion content element in our section. Before doing that, we'll load the home page first. Afterwards, we'll declare a variable named first height that will take the response from the get CSS property command. Inside get CSS property, we'll pass in the selector for our element. In this case, accordion, accordion item, first child, accordion content. We'll also specify that we want the height value. Before adding the assertion, I'll include a temporary console log command to show you what the value of first height comes back as. Now let's see how this works. On the command line, I'll issue npm test as usual and let the test run its course. You'll see an object be logged with some in-depth data about our CSS property. This is what we'll use for our assertion. Because the value returned from height contains the px unit, we'll take advantage of the parsed property and its value to get the numeric form of the data. Back in our test, we'll add an assertion expecting that first height parsed value be greater than zero. The format of this assertion is one of the reasons I like chai as an assertion library. We get to write our test in a very sentence-like structure. I'll run the test again just to make sure it passes. A quick note while running this test that we're not asserting that the content be 58 pixels specifically because we don't want our test to break if the content changes. We only want to make sure the value is greater than zero. Our test still passes, so let's move on. That was the positive scenario. That content should be showing on page load. What about the opposite? We also want to check that none of the other accordion content is visible. Let's write a test for that. We'll create another it block, this time naming the test should not show other content. Because the first thing we'll want to do is load the URL, Let's move that command from our first test into a new before each block. I'll add the before each hook to the top of our test, just to signify what it's doing. Then I'll grab that browser URL command and move it inside the function. I'll also get rid of that console log in the first test. As a review, before each is a mocha hook that will run whatever code we want before each of our tests in this section. With that out of the way, it's back to our test. First, a variable will be created to store our height value. Then, just as before, we'll use the getCSSProperty command, but this time pass in the second content item in our accordion. The nth of type selector is what we'll use to do that, asking for the second child of that type in our list items. I'll also console log out this value just in case something weird happens. Finally, I'll add our assertion to validate the height is specifically zero. Pretty simple, right? Let's run our test and try it out. Well, our first two tests passed as expected, but our newest one threw an error. The error says that it expected undefined to equal zero, which is obviously not right. It looks like the value isn't being provided in our parsed property. Checking out the log data, you can see this is true. 
Instead of a numeric value, the CSS property was defined as auto. That's because getCSSProperty checks the computed style of an element. And because we didn't define a specific height on our element, it defaults to auto. There are two ways around this. We could simply change our assertion to check that the height value is auto. That's easy to do, but I don't really like it because it's not actually validating that the content is hidden. Instead, I'm going to check a different property to ensure the content is hidden. Jumping back into the browser, I'll take a look at the hidden item and see that its display property is set to none. The content definitely won't be visible with this set, so let's validate that in the test. First, we change height to display in the variable name. And inside the getCSS property command. Finally, I'll change the expected value to be none. Once more, I'll run my test to see how it works. Looks like the display property is now being checked and the test is now passing. Before moving on, I'll remove that console log line in my code. OK, now we need to get to our pause command. We validated that the accordion is in a good state to start off with, so let's test its functionality. In our next test, we want to check that, upon clicking another accordion link, the visible content shrinks away and the requested content expands out. Because this is animated, it takes a brief moment for the state to finish its transition. Let me show you what I mean. In this test, I'm going to click the second item in the accordion menu, then check the display and size of the content in the first two accordion items. The first element should have a display of none, and the second should have a height greater than zero. Let's write our test. We'll create a new it block, this time with the name of should expand hide content on click. Inside the function, we'll start off by clicking the link for the second accordion item. Then we'll validate the height of our second content area is greater than zero. With that, let's run our tests. Seems to be working. Let's make our test a little more robust by checking the display of the first item. We'll duplicate the check we wrote in our previous test, updating our selector and our assertion to validate the display does not equal none. Again, we'll run our tests. Hmm, what happened? Did the first content not collapse? I want to see what's going on, so I'm going to add a debug right after the click command. Trying it out, I can see that the content is collapsed and that everything seems to be working as normal. So what's going on? Well, let's get rid of the debug command and log out the values of the height and display we're checking for. Running the test again, you can see that the display is definitely set to block, which isn't correct. But you may also notice that our height isn't very large. Out of curiosity, I'm going to run this test again. The display property stayed the same, but as I was suspecting, the height property is a different number. I can pretty safely say at this point, we're checking our values too soon. Because the hide show is an animation, it takes a moment for everything to transition over. In our test, we're checking the values as it's making the update, which is why our height is different each time, and the display value isn't updated yet. This is where we finally get to the pause command. Instead of clicking the link, then checking right away, we need to click, pause a moment, then check. Thankfully, this is really easy to do. Back in our test, right after clicking the element, I'll add a browser.pause command and pass in the number of milliseconds I want to wait before checking. Let's start with 100 and see what happens. After running our test, the value of the height is larger, but our display still isn't right. I'm guessing we haven't waited long enough. I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I actually know the length of the transition, which is 500 milliseconds. If you're unsure of this value, check with the person who created the page to see if they might have a better idea. With the updated value, I can run the test again and see they now pass every time. 
Our height value stays consistent, and our display value is correct. That's the value of the pause command. One final note. In the debug video, I mentioned increasing the size of the test timeout value. If you end up pausing a little too long, you'll run into a similar issue where your test time's out while waiting to complete. In cases like this, add this.timeout to the top of your test block to overcome that on a per test basis. Just as an example of this, I'm going to increase the value of my pause to 10,000, then run my tests to show they time out. To overcome this, I'll add this.timeout 15,000 to the test that needs the increased timeout, run it again, and see it passes fine now. This functionality is really handy when you have a specific test that takes a while, but the rest of your tests don't. In the next video, we'll talk about some alternatives to pause. For now though, pause is an extremely useful command to keep in your back pocket when you need to wait just a little bit.